Hey, this is Lynn. Happy Monday. It is way in Monday. I'm getting a little bit later start today and getting this video out um, because my daughter and her fiance have been here all morning and we've been doing wedding planning and debating things like decorations and, you know, dessert for the wedding and all that stuff. My daughter gave me a head uh, headache. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She kind of did give me a headache, but um, she gave me a haircut. My hair was getting so long. I haven't really done anything with it. Just kind of let it dry out, but I really needed a haircut. And uh, so got a haircut. She said she, she's the one who always cuts my hair and uh, she said that it is growing faster than it was before. So that's cool. Um, anyway, so just, you know, checking in, doing my weekly check in to show you uh, what's happened this past week and how things are going with my weight. Um, my mass activation syndrome is doing really well. Um, haven't had any throat swelling for a long time. I haven't needed to use my rescue medications. It's probably been at least two months since I've needed to use them. So I am really curious to see if this is going to be a permanent improvement or, or what. So, um, but I'm thrilled because I tell you throat swelling is scary and of all the different mast cell reactions that I have, those acute ones are the scariest because they're usually, you know, they have the throat swelling and tachycardia and dizziness and you know they're scary and my, my blood pressure will just shoot through the roof um so i'm very very pleased that i haven't experienced any of those for quite a while now i do still carry the rescue meds with me um even like when i go out on walks and everything because i'm I think I'm going to need to go through probably a good whole year dealing with the various things in the air, the seasons, the, you know, things coming off of the trees, just really feel confident that I don't necessarily need them anymore. But, um, yeah, so I do still carry them with me, but haven't needed them. I have them in a little tiny pill container, round pill container, and I shove it in my bra. <laughs> And honestly, I don't even feel it there. Like so many days when I've gone out, I've been doing things and I have my rescue meds with me. I forget they're there. And then when I go to get my pajamas on at night, it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> got this medicine in my bra. Anyways, probably TMI. But you know, I talk about poop here all the time. So it's like, you know, what is TMI really? Um, anyways, so um, I just kind of want to go through and say like, oh, sorry, I'm getting all discombobulated here. My, I did a great walk on Friday. We did a mall walk and um, I've been trying to get a mall walk in each week, which is really nice, especially since it's been frigidly cold. Now, not like the East Coast of the U.S. The East is being just battered up with blizzards. But for Washington, it's been cold. You know, it's been in the low teens, especially in the morning. It gets into the 20s in the afternoon. Um, but we are expected to get a little more snow. We got snow last Thursday. We're expected to get a little more snow this week, but the temperatures are supposed to climb. And um, by the weekend, it should be in the upper 40s, which is so much better than the teens and the low 20s. Um, but yeah, I actually walked three miles on my mall walk with zero knee pain. And it went by so fast and I was so effortless that I didn't even notice it. So I know one of my goals for 2024 and um, like a non-scale goal is to do a 5k. I at this point feel like I can already walk a 5k. Now getting the pace up is something I need to work on, but I'm actually as distance wise, I'm already doing well. Oh, I forgot to turn my notifications off. You probably heard that um, on my phone. I got a notification, but anyway, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to start looking into seeing what 5Ks are going on later this year, like maybe a late spring, summer, early summer, and get signed up for one. So when I find out what the options are, maybe I'll you know let you guys give me an opinion because I I. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know what's out there. So this is going to be really interesting. Never done it before. Any of you who are in Washington, if you want to join me, I would love that. That'd be awesome to do that together. Um, okay, so I have been doing the plank challenge and doing really well. 
I've had to back up for those of you who are following my plank challenge. I did like 35 seconds, maybe what five days ago or six days ago and kind of really strained the muscles in my back. Um, cause I'm learning that this, these planks engage your whole body and they use muscles that have been not used for a while. And, you know, some of these muscles start to scream at you after a while. And that's exactly what happened. Like I kind of did a little strain on my muscles in my lower back. And so I had to back way off and I didn't stop doing them, but I just was listening really closely to my back and not pushing it beyond you know, what my back told me I needed to stop. So I got back down, you know, my time went way down, but then I've been working back up to it. And yesterday my plank was back at like 31 seconds without the back pain. So I think that's good. And I've appreciated all of your guys' feedback and comments and, and they've been super helpful in helping me to do this plank challenge. And I am, I do, I'm mulling around an idea for next month to do another fitness challenge. And so I will be letting you know soon what I'm going to do. So um, let's see, I have been struggling with my sleep but I don't know if it's a bad thing. I've basically been staying up really late and, you know, like two, sometimes like two in the morning, it, which isn't good. Cause I know that if you're going to get like less sleep, it's better to have your sleep start before midnight and your quality of sleep, you know, is supposedly better before midnight than after midnight. Um, and I, fortunately, because I'm retired, I can sleep in. So I'm getting enough sleep, but I'm just not, happy that I've just been stuck with getting to bed so late. I really feel like my mornings are less productive. Um, and so, but I just have this energy and I find it hard to actually settle down and get to sleep. And it's, I don't feel like it's an anxiety thing. It, I don't, I don't, I just feel like I got, I have energy and I'm not tired. So I, you know, a lot of times I'll go to bed and I'll, um, but I won't go, I won't go to sleep. So we'll see. That's something that I think I'm going to be really working on just kind of gradually getting my sleep time earlier and earlier and to hopefully I can get back into a normal sleep schedule back when I was first on medical leave and for quite a while for maybe a good solid year or so I was just naturally waking up somewhere around six o'clock in the morning. Um, so that's not happening now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes some days I can really sleep in. Um, but today I woke up I think maybe a little before nine and that's, that's kind of sleeping in because that's, you know, if I, when I was working, I started work at 730 in the morning. So that's nine o'clock is kind of late for me. So that's something I'm going to work on. Um, one of the things that I did this past week was I purged my closet and I got two laundry baskets filled to the brim with clothes that I can't wear anymore that don't fit. And so, um, I'll have to take a picture of, of those and show you, but I'm going to keep a, a few items just to kind of show my progress as far as my, you know, my clothes. I did post a picture on my community, the community tab on my channel, um, that shows me in my, one of my old scrub tops from when I was nursing and it was, I looked at the label, it was a five XL. Now that doesn't mean I wore 5XL on everything when it comes to scrubs and any of you who are, okay, my screen just froze. But if you're in healthcare, you know that when it comes to scrubs, different brands fit differently. Um, and so you just can't get stuck on a specific size. You just need to kind of try on the variety of sizes and see what fits. But at the time, I think my normal clothing was at least a 3x in like pajamas which I like to have kind of loose I was wearing like a 4x so my scrub top that I got was a 5x um, so really big but I took a picture of me kind of holding out how much room there is now and then another picture showing like I kind of pulled it back behind me to show my current outline when there's definitely a difference like I'm starting to get a waist again which is really cool um, but I'm going to keep a few uh, clothing items out just to you know, so that I can have that visual of, okay, man, this used to fit. And now look at how huge it is. I'm swimming in it. Some of the tops, you know, I had my daughter with me and we tried on everything. I tried on everything and she was like, okay, that's a dress now. <laughs> so that felt good. You know, it's like I was swimming in a lot of these clothes and I love that. Um, one cool thing is that 
I did actually, like she purged her closet too. And I actually got some hand-me-downs from her because my tops I can wear like a size large now, not even a plus size, but just a size large. And a lot of her things that she had were a size large. And I even fit into a couple of her size medium things, but she kept those items. Um, but yeah, so cool. It's like, I can't wait until I can actually like, I have to go out and buy more clothes and especially pants. So I did go through all my pants in my closet and I found one pair that was a size smaller that fit me. Okay. And, um, so I'm probably going to have to buy pants soon, but I will, I'm just wearing my stuff until they practically fall off of me. Um, cause I don't want to spend a lot of money on clothes, especially since I keep losing weight. Um, Okay, so let's get on to my results from this week. So I had great results, and I was down. The scale had me down 2.8 pounds by weigh-in, and I broke through what I thought was going to be like one of my old set points, which is 275. I had been 275, I feel like, for probably a good decade, and um, I'm now 273.2. So I broke through that perceived set point. And so that has the scale down 2.8 pounds for this past week. Now my fat free body weight, the good tissue was up 0.4. And like I mentioned last week, I'm not getting that full, those full pound um, improvements in the fat free body weight. It's kind of dropping down to like about a half a pound a week, which is fine. Cause like I said, I can't just keep perpetually forever gaining muscle and, and, and bone at some point it's got to, got to, got to level out. Um, but I also notice I'm not very hungry, so I'm not necessarily eating as much. I'm, you know, just gauging what I eat off of my hunger and I just haven't been that hungry lately. And I don't know, maybe my body's perfectly happy living off of my body fat, which I still have plenty of. Um, but yeah, so my total fat loss for the week was 3.2 pounds. So yay, love that. I almost forgot to mention my visceral fat went down again this week. It's been taking, you know, three to four weeks. So it is now 22 and it started at 30. My goal for the upper end of acceptable is 15. So I am, I'm happy. I don't know if the planks made a difference or not with the visceral fat. I'm kind of guessing they probably didn't make a difference as far as visceral fat goes because the planks are strengthening the muscles, whereas something like sprinting and uh, that sort of thing is going to be more helpful for visceral fat. So I think that this drop in visceral fat was just the standard drops that I'm having every usually about four weeks. But, um, you know, the closer I get to the acceptable range, the happier I am. Because, you know, who wants to have all that fat around the organs inside your body? And, um, you know, the more that I lose, the, you know, a whole pound is, is significant when it comes to fat around the organs. So the more I lose, you know, the healthier it is for my internal organs. So happy, you know, that's, that's great. And I just, like I said, I forgot to even include that. But visceral fat, down again. Yay. Um, so as far as total since the very beginning, now my first weigh-in was uh, I weighed in at 339.6. Now this was a couple days after I officially started the carnivore diet. So I am pretty positive I was over 340 when I started. Um, but based on my first weigh-in, my total loss on the scale was 66.4 pounds. I have had a gain of good tissue of 23 pounds even. So that means my actual fat loss is 89.4 pounds, just shy of 90 pounds of fat loss. So unbelievable. I'm so happy. I mean, I feel good. I, I noticed it's like probably somewhere around the five month mark. I started to notice more significant changes as far as energy goes. Um, just the way I feel in general is more steady throughout the day. I haven't been needing to take naps. Um, 
I have had better strength. I've been able to get out and do things that I wasn't able to do before. So I don't know where you're at with this in the carnivore diet, but stick with it because what, you know, you do see results early on, especially with inflammation. But as you continue on, it's almost like my mitochondria is waking up. And I'm feeling like I can, like I said, I can walk further. My muscles, like when I'm doing the planks, I can feel my muscles engaging. And it's like they have the ability now to engage, which is something that is not, was not the case before because my muscles were very deconditioned. Um, so of the total 23 pounds of good tissue that I've gained, 21.8 pounds of that is muscle, 1.4 pounds is bone, and I, from last week, have gone down 0.2 of water, and again, like I mentioned this, the water fluctuates up and down, the net water has been pretty much zero um, since the beginning, so again, fantastic results. Um, you guys have been super encouraging and I'm, you know, really pleased at how the carnivore diet is, is going. Um, now I want to just really encourage you. I know a lot of you out there have really great stories. If you have not, you know, had an opportunity to share your story, first of all, go and apply for the carnivore diet documentary, Healing Humanity. Um, I'll put a link below to the site where you can go and apply. If you want to share your story, um, as you know, a lot of you know, I'm on the research team for the documentary. I go through all of the applications um, and I will be doing some interviews. A Carrie from Homestead Howe does interviews. And so we're looking for the people that would be really good candidates for the documentary. Now, of course, not everybody's gonna be able to be the key people for the documentary. Um, but we do want to be able to show that there are a significant number of people who are experiencing a lot of benefits and health benefits from, from eating this way. And so that's kind of like my, my big encouragement for this week is we need help finding you. <laughs> so you can help us by submitting your application on the website and at least you know, get the conversation started with us regarding where you're at and whether you would be a good candidate for the documentary. And, um, you know, let's tell the world. And honestly, for me, coming from the nursing viewpoint, um, you know, we have all of these therapeutic diets in the medical field, and they are aimed at usually critically ill people. And of course, if you have chronic illnesses like diabetes, like I don't honestly have ever met, met a diabetic who actually had their diabetes reversed using the recommended diet for diabetics. I don't know. Have you heard of that? I haven't. <laughs> yeah. You know, basically they recommend this is your diet, but I've never had a diabetic go, oh yeah, I went on the recommended diet for diabetics and now I don't have diabetes anymore. Never heard it. But I have heard it with people who go on the carnivore diet. So I would hope that the medical community would consider the carnivore diet as a viable therapeutic diet and prescribe it for people. I mean, why wouldn't a diabetic want to go on a diet that, that other people have seen? They've been able to go off of their insulin. You know, if you're on injectable insulin, to be able to go off of your insulin is huge. Like who, who likes injecting themselves several times a day? Who likes checking their blood sugar, pricking themselves several, several times a day? Now, unless you have a continuous glucose monitor, that's what you're doing. You're pricking yourself all the time. And so, um, yeah, why wouldn't you want to do something that can help you get off of your insulin? And some insulin dependent diabetics are, are even able to go off of their oral medications as well. Um, so yeah, I really want this to be considered as a viable therapeutic diet for people. We know what it does for obesity, you know, it's doing it for me and, but it, it heals your gut. It helps 
autoimmune disease. It helps diabetes. It helps heart disease. I mean, I can list off all the diseases that it, that this diet helps. So I hope that we can find you guys out there that are going to help us show the world what this way of eating can do for your health. So please check out the link I'm going to put in the description. Consider putting submitting an application for for the documentary. And if you're not super comfortable with it right now, just, just think about it. For those of you who pray, pray about it because it is something that, um, you know, you have to be wanting to do. You know, I don't want to force anybody to do something they don't want to do. It's something you have to want to do. And, um, if you, you know, feel passionate about it and because, you know, if you're not passionate about it, that's going to come across in the camera. So if you're passionate about it and you really feel that you want to get the word out, absolutely. You can also, if you, if you want to come on and, um, you know, talk to me on a live stream, I would love that. You know, I, I know that a lot of you, you know, come into the live chat on the live streams. I would love to actually start to meet some of you. I, I know your names. Um, and I, I appreciate your comments. And I know that so many of you are very passionate and some of you are probably camera shy, <laughs> you know, but so was I before I started this, you know, it's a risk to put yourself out there. It really is. And, um, but you know, I'm all into challenging myself to step out of my comfort zone. I've always encouraged my kids to do the same, you know, not to just do things that are within your comfort zone because then you don't grow. And, you know, coming on to a live stream can be scary, but the carnivore community is very, very supportive, encouraging, loving, and um, it's it ends up being a really good experience. So anyways, that's it for today. I know I've rambled on a little bit more than I usually do, but, um, you know, I really want us to start encouraging people more to, to come on and, and join in and, and apply for this documentary because we need to get um, the word out. Okay, that's it for today. Again, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Thank you all who are doing the plank challenges with me. And uh, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I'm getting some great feedback that it's where you're finding it beneficial. So really appreciate that. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.